Hello, hi everyone. I'm Bhavish, and uh, this is the first tutorial or uh, introduction to AS400. So, in this uh, first tutorial, we'll first basically talk about what is AS400, um, where does it fit into the overall uh, computing ecosystem, uh, or where does it, how does it compare with the cloud? or how does it compare with the uh, latest platforms or hardware or the operating systems or softwares which we have so we'll do a general introduction on what is as 400 uh, so the major problem is that uh, when new hires or new recruits uh, we join companies are uh, put into as 400 projects uh, AS400, which is now called uh, IBM Power Systems, the operating system is now IBM I. Uh, so the major problem which I have observed many times is uh, it takes a lot of time for everyone to understand uh, or to get uh, themselves known to what actually they are working upon or what have they given. So what I have observed is basically they are given this uh, black and green screen and uh, they are then told to learn different uh, systems which are running on top of it so the corporations would uh, have built their legacy systems their core uh, si their core systems in many domains like banking insurance retail or transportation or so on so if there is a new hire or a new recruit who joins a company and uh, he gets a project upon, uh, he gets a project in as400 and he's put in as400 development team or as400 administration uh, team or whatever so uh, the big problem here is that they do not understand what actually as400 is um, where does it i mean how does it actually fit into the computing ecosystem which we have or uh, what are they even doing so it takes like six months to a year for get for, for them to get uh, themselves known to what their system is what are all the functionalities and other things so uh, this is my short explanation on uh, what is as400 so that is the first video see in the series of as400 videos which i'm planning to make um so let us begin uh, with what is AS400 and let us try to understand uh, what this thing is. All right. So if you are given this uh, black and green screen and you have been told that it is AS400, you will also have this title at the top which says AS400 or IBM I, I series or anything like that. So you would first uh, get very inconvenient because you're not used to or you're not familiar with this kind of uh, user interface or command line interface. You would be using normal windows uh, or normal uh, windowed environments. You would be familiar with normal windowed environments. But then when it comes to a user interface where you have to spend most of your time working in a separate different kind of UI, uh, you do not you would not really understand what is this where is this running or is it hosted anywhere or what is going on in the background so let us start uh, with our topic so as400 is the old name of what is now called ibm power systems on the hardware level so this is a server so as400 is a server so what is a server a uh, server is a big computer. It need not be big. It can even be a tiny computer. But, uh, generally, it is a big computer which serves thousands, millions of requests which come to it. So what kind of requests? Any requests. Like uh, if you have a request to load a web page, if you want some data, you can ask the server for that data. Then the server will reply back with uh, some information. Uh, there could be services such as apis and other things which could be hosted on server so basically server is a central computer and uh, other computers can ask that server computer for any of the information it wants or any of the services which it wants for itself uh, so as400 is a server 
and uh, so what would be examples of servers uh, so for example we host our files in google drive uh, so those files are actually uploaded to google servers and whenever you require those files back you log into google drive and then we can get those files back so you're retrieving the files back from google's servers so or google's computers so when you watch youtube videos the videos are hosted or the videos are kept on kept or they are stored in the servers of youtube so when you access those videos the videos are coming from the server computers which are owned by youtube so as 400 is uh, a server so its job is same as what is the job of other servers its job is to serve serve requests so various kinds of requests so we mentioned that as 400 is an old uh, name for the system so as 400 uh, name has been prevalent or it is a common uh, name which has been used for this system for a very long time so recently in past uh, 10 years or 15 years the name has the marketing team has uh, changed this name from as 400 to some other name to make it catchy or to make it uh, uh, new age compatible or things of that sort so they have tried to change the name multiple times so as 400 uh, was changed to i series then uh, it was all it, it, it went through multiple revisions of names so currently it is ibm power systems uh, so server would require a hardware so if you talk about any computer computer would require hardware and uh, then the computer also has operating system installed on it so i'm using windows 11 so this is an operating system so in case of my system which i'm currently using i have a lot a Lenovo ThinkPad laptop and uh, that laptop has Windows 11 installed on it which is the operating system and I have multiple applications which are running on top of uh, Windows so in the same way if we do a one-to-one -one comparison of uh, my laptop with the uh, server computers of AS400 server computers this is what will come up with so what I have is uh, I have a laptop which is uh, let's say any brand laptop uh, which is uh, running let's say an operating system okay so a laptop let's say we have thinkpad or hp or dell or any laptop which is the hardware so it has a keyboard it has hard drive it has cpu and so on so the hardware part of it uh, is what i'm trying to say so hardware is for the laptop the hardware uh, i can equate it with ibm power system so ibm power system is the name of the hardware of the server so server the computer which is there the server computer also needs to have its own hardware so that hardware is called uh, ibm power systems so on top of this hardware i am running windows 11 in my case so uh, in this case i'll have the operating system so i'll just write hardware here so hardware is this then on top of hardware for every computer you have an operating system so on your mobile you would have android operating system on your desktops you would have windows and so on so the operating system in this case uh, for my laptop is uh, microsoft windows 11 and in case of as 400 environment the operating system is called ibm i yeah, this is the new age names which are uh, current uh, latest names which are available for AS100 system and then you have uh, frameworks and then you have applications and so on and so forth so application I'm running Microsoft uh, Word, Excel, Chrome so all these are applications on my laptop so on AS400, the application, equivalent application uh, would be any core system, core backend system, like banking system, insurance system, or retail backend, or any other backend system, which is developed by any corporation or any other company which can run on top of uh, this server. So 
now let us move ahead so we have understood what as 400 is now why is there a need for this specific server so why as 400 i mean uh we when we look at the outside world uh when we go to the uh, normal developers day-to-day -day jobs they do they have not they are not concerned with what server is my code running on they simply write their code in java python and they deploy it on the cloud and the developers are generally not uh, concerned about on what hardware on what operating system their code runs it just runs so the differentiating factor with AS400 is um, AS400 is a complete ecosystem. As we talked about, it is hardware operating system. It has its own uh, uh, frameworks. It has its own applications on top of it. So uh, the development also generally happens on top of uh, the AS400 uh, ecosystem itself. So when you are a developer or when you are a new developer who has joined a company and who uh, is just starting to uh, develop small programs or make changes in existing programs, you would uh, be bombarded with a completely new interface or a completely new system which you are not familiar with. In your college or in your university, you would be familiar with writing code in Eclipse and then uh, running it or writing code in Notepad++ or IDEs like NetBeans or uh, IntelliJ IDEA or any other integrated development environments you'll be familiar with writing code in that and then you just hit the run button and it runs on your computer. But in the corporate uh, environment, these systems are there which are different than your laptops or your personal computer. So your code has to run on either cloud or the company's hardware or the client's hardware or some other hardware which is hosted at a different place so the code runs on their machines so you have to deploy it on their machines so the excellent thing with as400 is that this is a complete package you just log into their system you log into as400 you write or you edit code on as400 and you just deploy it uh, so why as400 will move to this topic first we'll just come back again to what is as400 uh, so we have talked about what uh, this system is. Uh, we'll also see how it looks like. So you'll get a, so once you log into AS400, you'll get a menu like this. You can go to the, you can directly type your commands here. So uh, for example, you can uh, call QP2 term, which is an emulator for Linux based commands. Uh, you can write commands here directly like for example work active job uh, this will be a task manager or any sorts of commands uh, which will come to later on about what is for commands are available and which are not but this is basically the black and green screen which is available so how does as 400 look so i believe everyone should uh, understand what they are working on when they are working on some system or the functionality that is why I'm giving so much of emphasis on what is AS400. So if we look at how it looks like, so if I just type in AS400 Power 10, Power 10 because Power 10 is the latest uh, release in AS400 as of today. So these are rack servers. So these are some of the photos which are available on the internet. But if you see this vertical server, so these are old uh, servers. Generally these days, uh, the server uh, infrastructure is made up of uh, large racks in which these servers go into slots on top of each other. So usually the hardware looks like this. So you have uh, something which looks like an old desktop PC which is kept on the floor or which is uh, kept sideways. So these go into server racks. Uh, we'll look at server racks as well later on. So, so yeah, yeah, AS400 machine looks like a normal server. If you have seen other servers before, so this is also another good example on Wikipedia. So this is a huge uh, rack. It is like uh, four feet, five feet in length, two to three feet in width, and uh, this is a hardware in of itself, uh, which is kept in cupboard-like uh, structures in server data centers which can be uh, pulled out like a drawer 
it can be pushed in and pulled out like drawers and uh, there is cpu there are hard drives there are you know, general fans which keep the air flowing and ibm's own proprietary things are there inside so there are other pictures if you look at the top down view of the power system uh, you'll get to see that uh, these are heat sinks which are kept on top of the processors so you have four heat sinks you can see four heat sinks here so which mean, it means that the, there are uh, four processors uh, attached in a single power machine uh, then this is the front part the right hand side is the front part left hand side is the back ports of it which would have a lot of data cables network cables coming out from it and at the center you would have uh, data cards on the right hand side not actually sure what is this black thing but uh, i assume there would be these would be slots for putting in more uh, data cards or uh, your hard drives or ssds more storage and so on yeah these are these should be ram slots because you also need to put ram somewhere so yeah there should be the basic components like you have in your desktop computer a server is just a powerful uh, computer which has a uh, lot of resources so you can see the four processors your desktop has only a single processor uh, multiple hard drives you can also connect a bunch of these systems together to make a powerful ibm power system so the new power series uh, systems bring in capabilities to share ram share uh, hardware uh, data storage across multiple systems and share resources in general so people uh, might have introduced you to the user interface in uh, a lot of cases they will also say that this is a legacy system or uh, you would come across uh, ideologies or uh, things which people say on the internet or uh, your colleagues or other people who you ask that this is a legacy system and uh, that it it has been running from a lot of time like uh, this is released in 1960s and 1970s uh, but yeah it is still been being largely used in industries across various sorts of industries be it banking back end systems insurance back end systems and then uh retail systems uh, it is also used in transportation or wherever you need to uh, keep a lot of logs a lot of data at one place uh, so that multiple users are able to access that data simultaneously process transactions on that data and this actually performs much better uh, than if you would use normal servers because these are dedicated machines uh, developed by ipm and they have very high input and output capa uh, input and output capabilities they have uh, dedicated processors for input and output and so on so the environment the ecosystem is still going strong new code is still being developed and a lot of code uh, millions and millions or i can say billions of lines of code is already running so uh, this is famous saying that uh, the longer a language is alive or the longer it has been in been in use even longer it will stay alive because it is very difficult to replace these core systems with uh, something new because these are highly customized systems as per the requirements over the years it gets modified the core system gets modified and it becomes customized so it is almost impossible to replace it by a new system as time goes on yeah so this is how as400 looks like and uh, you can also you'll also hear something about mainframes so if i search for mainframe um I can see that uh, Google gives out images which look, which are of data centers at the end. But yeah, if you look at the first image, uh, this is a mainframe. This is IBM's mainframe. So AS400 is not mainframe. Uh, there's a distinction between mainframes and AS400. Mainframes are uh, actually much, much larger in size and capacity and everything. So they're like 
uh, you can see from pictures also. So when we looked at AS400 pictures, it was a single rack of a server. Uh, but a mainframe would be a hundred times larger machine or uh, it, it is much, much larger in capacity and so on. So AS400 is much cheaper compared to uh, or IBM I, I should say. So IBM I is much cheaper power systems is the correct word for the hardware. Uh, IBM power systems is much cheaper uh, compared to mainframes. Mainframes would be required for very uh, demanding workloads, whereas uh, IBM power systems or AS400 is usable in smaller organizations or where uh, the throughput required is less compared to what these big machines would be used for. So yes, there's a difference between AS400 and mainframe. These two are not the same things. AS400 is in the category of mid-range systems, while mainframes are uh, yeah, large systems. So yeah, that is the difference. Both are developed by IBM. Uh, so IBM develops everything for these machines. It's processor design, processor manufacturing. It can probably take it from a vendor, but then the designing of all components and everything, the operating system, everything is uh, done by IBM. So yeah, and that is what we looked at. Uh, what is AS400? So it is a different hardware. Uh, so when you're connected to AS400 and you look at this screen, uh, this is not running on your laptop. So you're connected through uh, uh, different software. So uh, the software is called a TN5250 emulator, TN5250 emulator. We will talk about this uh, later on. Uh, but then just understand that this menus which you see or if you type some commands type any command over here for example work obj and if you search for anything or whatever you do in this black and green screen this is not actually getting processed in your laptop or desktop it's not happening at your end uh, you are just shown an image of uh, this is just a user interface which is painted by the server so the processing, the backend logic, the transactions, they happen not at inside your laptop. They don't happen in your, let's say, Tino, uh, the Novo ThinkPad laptop, which you're running. It does not get processed in your Windows 11 or Windows 10. It gets processed in the server. And when you give it a command, so if I uh, press one, so what I'm sending is a command to the server. So the server will take that command, it will process, it will it will do its tasks and it will reply back with a refreshed user interface or a refreshed screen. So you are logged into a server and you are using a server. So this is your window to the server. This is, I repeat again, this is not running on your machine. This is running on the server machine. So if you get disconnected, if your internet goes off or if your system crashes or whatever happens, you your tasks which you have submitted in the server, they would still be running because it was not running in your machine in the first place. So yeah, uh, that was my basic definition of what is uh, AS400. Uh, so there are some topics which we have not covered, why AS400 we will cover later on. Mainframe versus AS400 we talked about. Um, AS400 versus cloud uh, uses past and future. We will cover these topics in a different video. So this is my basic attempt at introducing you to what is AS400. That is it. Thank you.